Hello and welcome to the Philippines. This video is save money at the public market and how to make probiotics at home. I'll get into all that. I'm going to go over uh, uh, the budget, the expenses. This is down at Carbone Market, a huge car uh, public market downtown Cebu City area. They're in the process of doing some remodeling down there, trying to modernize uh, different areas of it, as you can see right here. One of the new buildings is going up. There have been some protests about that. Some of the people don't want to move out of their stalls and possibly pay a little bit more uh, for rent eventually at the new modernized facility, but uh, it, is, it is going forward. There's been a couple attempts at lawsuits, but anyway, you've got, this thing is pretty much runs 24 hours a day, I think. You've got trucks coming in, unloading with uh, produce. A lot of this produce, vegetables, Fruits are, are local. They come from the mountains, Busai, up above Cebu City or further south on Cebu Island. Um, Delaget area is a big farming area. A uh, number of different farming areas where these trucks bring it in from. A lot of times a truck will pick up things from several different farmers in their region, bring it in, and they've got regular vendors who buy it and resell it. Many other markets in town, smaller markets, come here. If they're not buying uh, some items direct, they'll come here and buy and put a little markup on it and sell it at their little bit smaller markets. And they are scattered all over the city. I gave my money, uh, I, gave my, I gave my girlfriend some money the other day. And she, I, I thought she was going to go to the local market, but she said, well, she was going to get a whole lot of stuff, and you're going to see that. And so I gave her 1500 about 30 U.S. dollars, and she went down there, and I, that covered her transportation. I think her transportation, she got a bus uh, for 11 pesos, about 22 cents, down, and then a taxi back because she had a whole big haul to bring back here as well. Now, I make my own uh, sauerkraut and pickles, and I can ferment other things too. That's where you get probiotics, the good bacteria. Uh, for your stomach and intestines, for your digestive tract. Now I'll get in. I'll show you show you that. I bought a new device, uh, airlock type jar, uh, to help me with that. It's much larger than my quart jars I've been making it in, and I'll get into some of the details with that as well a little bit later. Anyway, huge place down here. Many many streets up and down. You can get lost down here. Uh, almost, they got a hardware area, they've got a clothing area, ukai ukai, which is used clothing uh, that comes in by the bale. Um, a wet market, the, the meats, and all that sort of thing. And anyway, let's get into the actual things that we bought here. This is three bags that she brought home. The middle bag is all cabbage, eight huge he heads of cabbage. And that cost me... Uh, 200, 290 pesos, about 35 pesos per kilo. And cauliflower was, uh, cost me 95 pesos, uh, 140 pesos per kilo. The broccoli was 240 pesos per kilo, and, and, and that's uh, 268 pesos, uh, about 5 U.S. dollars, and I eat quite a bit of that. These radishes, Korean radishes, I think, 40 per kilo and 40 pesos cost me. The jicama is 20 pesos per kilo, cost me 24 pesos. Come from up in the mountains, down south mountain way, I guess. That's what I told you. The potatoes were 60 per kilo and uh, 89 pesos total for the potatoes. That's about 27 cents uh, uh, for U.S. dollars for that those potatoes there per pound. My girlfriend does an awful lot of soups, very healthy soups, and uh, she'll use taro in them sometimes. Sometimes we uh, slice them up and make chips on a rare occasion. Potato, like taro chips. Keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is seasonal and the prices change. Uh, so, uh, you know, what the price you see today might not be the price tomorrow. Sweet potato, I've never found sweet potatoes here that look anything close to what I've uh, been used to in the USA. And there's a couple different uh, varieties, well, probably more than two varieties. This is more of a white, more of a, a fibrous type potato, I guess. And they call it camotes here. 
I also try to eat a lot of uh, avocado, and uh, they are a very healthy, nutritious, uh, healthy fat source. I also use uh, avocado oil. I buy that in the stores. 60 pesos per kilo, and this cost me 581 uh, pesos. Bananas are everywhere here, uh, and they were 55 per kilo. It cost me 90 pesos, about 45 U.S. cents. Um, one thing I just learned about bananas, they give off ethylene gas, and uh, ethylene gas will, uh, will speed up the ripening process of other fruit if, if you place it near the other fruit. So keep that in mind if you don't want your fruit to ripen faster. Don't put it near your bananas. I also somewhat e uh, sometimes eat a somewhat uh, green banana because it is insoluble fiber and it helps with your uh, growing your good bacteria in your digestive system. And they become a whole lot of sugar. Uh, they give you a lot of potassium, but they give you a lot, a lot of sugar also as they ripen. Sayote. Sayote is very popular here as well. It's a good substitution for potato, as a matter of fact. And we use it often, uh, about 5 pesos per kilogram, cost her 50. Uh, she gave her a deal, uh, 50 pesos, one U.S. dollar for all of those. These onions cost 120 uh, uh, per kilo, and I don't know if that is a kilo or not, but it says here that she paid 120 pesos for that. The tomatoes, tomatoes were about the, well, were 30 pesos per kilo, 170 uh, pesos, and uh, that would be, about, what, about 13 U.S. cents, I think, per pound, I believe. Green peppers were 200 uh, pesos per kilo, about 40 pesos for that. The eggplant were 60 pesos per kilo, about 40 pesos there. Uh, 20 U.S. cents. She eats a lot of eggplant. I've never really got a taste for those. But And then carrots are not listed here, but they tend to be a bit expensive here. Not sure because they're local. Part two of this video, making sauerkraut, uh, making uh, probiotics, the good bacteria for your digestive system. I bought this Kilner fermentation set, found it online on Lazada, 1600 uh, uh, 1,600 pesos. I've been doing a, a quart at a time, and that was kind of getting old. And anyway, you got a large jar, 102 ounces, I believe, and the cover up top, those white pieces are weights to put on top to keep it under. It needs to be anaerobic, so it needs to be under the oxygen. You don't want oxygen getting to your probiotics. And you, you can use almost any vegetable uh, carrots, uh, carrots, cabbage, and I'm using cabbage making sauerkraut. Um, I occasionally make pickles. Haven't had a lot of luck here. And the piece upper right there is an airlock system so that I don't have to keep uh, burping it, what they call burping, and o opening a jar and letting the carbon dioxide uh, out of the jar. It does it automatically. Uh, the rubber piece there fits it instead of a... Uh, a lid, that rubber piece fits there, doesn't stay down real well, but it is what it is, works. Here's a closer look at the airlock system. You fill that with water and it keeps the air out. Started with eight heads of cabbage, large heads of cabbage. I guessed at that and I cut it up, uh, cut it up, took me, <laughs> it took me quite a bit of time to do that. There are many videos online if you want to more information and, and just uh, written things online as well. So anyway, once I cut it up, about half the head, I would put salt on it. Uh, sea salt, you don't, do not want to use iodized salt. Iodized salt, I think, kills the bacteria. My girlfriend had bought a little uh, gram meter uh, several months ago. Anyway, that came out real handy. I weighed my lettuce. And they average between 500 and 650 grams. So you want, uh, I wanted about two and a half, two and a half grams uh, per pound, I think. I, I, I forget the exact measurements, but I decided per, per 800 grams, I wanted 2.5%. Uh, so that's how I figured it out. And I was able, I, I found this uh, ground Himalayan 
pink salt at SNR, similar to Costco around the world, and I think it was right around 500 pesos, about 10 US dollars. I've also found pickling salt a couple places since then, and I have some, but I've never used it. Um, not quite sure. I don't know if that's just white salt without the iodine and the, the anti-caking agents. I have read that you don't want to use a metal pan for this, and I'm not sure if all metals are the same or not. Um, there again, uh, <laughs> use other reference material. Uh, this is not a documentary. Uh, so I'm using a plastic pan. Other people say to use a glass, a glass bowl if you can. Uh, anyway, once you cut up uh, the the cabbage and you put it in the bowl um, you're you're actually you're not adding any water at all you're massaging that for a period of time and uh, I massage it for a while let it sit and the salt draws a lot of the water out of the cabbage and and makes makes its own brine you do not want to use vinegar vinegar will kill the good bacteria and uh, actually made a lot more brine these were pretty fresh and they had a lot of water content and uh, I actually had to pour some of the brine off in the end because it was more than would fit in the jar. In the past, I've always just used a t one tablespoon of salt to one quart jar, and that seemed to work pretty good for me, but now I'm starting to measure it scientifically. Now, this is my first head of cabbage down in, uh, in the jar itself, and uh, you can see all the liquid there. And what you want to do, you want to make sure all the air is out of that. So you pound it down, use your fist if, if the jar is big enough, uh, or use some sort of a wood mallet, something to, to kind of beat it down. And you, you want it packed pretty well in there to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. It is supposed to be anaerobic, no air oxygen allowed in the process to ferment. Eight cabbages turned out to be the perfect amount, fit in there uh, just well, and that's, uh, that's just uh, floating on top. There's actually quite a bit of space. You can see the, the white rings. Those are the weights that I got with the kit, the white rings on top, and that is holding everything down underneath the brine, brine being salt water that was created from the water of the cabbage. I did not add any extra water which you do with some types of uh, fermentation processes now this company is a uh, the trademark the design is owned by a uk company british company anyway um, don't know where it's made or anything but seems to be pretty quality i wish they would have used a screw-on cover instead of that rubber gasket cover that they have because even in their direction it says if if the, the rubber lid uh, rises up, which my, my observation is that it does very, very often, uh, the air, what, what happens, the, the fermentation pro process uh, creates gases, carbon dioxide, which rise and will bubble up. And that's why if you have a regular jar with a lid, you have to burp it, you have to open it every day. Uh, anyway, this system is meant to automatically a burp it for you and anyway that rubber that rubber piece on top just kind of it's kind of a loose little fit and it it doesn't stay stay on is my observation and even in their directions anyway a nice uh, a nice setup and uh, I'm making a lot more I'll give a little bit of sauerkraut to uh, uh, family and a friend and we'll go from there I usually ferment it a about uh, three to four weeks. Now, I've, I've read different places. It depends upon your taste and how much salt you use also. There's a range of salt. Too much, too little salt will affect it. Too much salt will affect it. So you want to get pretty close to the uh, proper amounts. Um, how long? I'd like to get a good fermentation, a longer fermentation. I, I believe that the the time increases the, the the better taste that I prefer as well. And it doesn't taste like any sauerkraut that uh, that I've had on hot dogs back in the U.S. in my childhood. <laughs> I've also read that uh, the, the process of fermentation, uh, in particular cabbage, increases the vitamin C content 
uh, many, many fold. And so you, you know, a table, I take a tablespoon of, of uh, sauerkraut almost every morning, maybe uh, later in the afternoon. And I also have kefir, which has more probiotics, something you can make at home if you have the right uh, a mixture to start it with. Similar to yogurt, but has many more uh, ba good bacteria involved in it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.